A lot of us learn data science through doing small projects to hone our skills or to learn new concepts and tools. It is sometimes a very steep learning curve and documenting and sharing this process through writing is a very good way to keep track of your progress and is a very effective way of learning. By doing all this, you also showcase your knowledge and a portfolio of projects or proof of work to other people, including your future employers. You might even help a lot of people who are just one step behind you. I dabbled with data science writing on Medium in late 2019, so my articles became popular and I even earned some decent money from them. Earning a few dollars a day is great, it's enough for me to buy cheese in the Netherlands. But if you're serious about it, it could become a potential source of side income. But I'm not the most qualified person to talk about all this. Today we have a special guest, Sophia Young. Sophia is a senior data scientist at Anaconda. She's also a data science writer with millions of views on Medium and Anaconda Nucleus. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tuvu, I'm a data science consultant based in the Netherlands. If you've watched my earlier video about building an interactive Python dashboard with Bano and HVplot, that project was actually inspired by one of the blog posts by Sophia. That's also how I got in touch and I'm really happy to have her today to share with us her experience in data science writing. Thank you Sophia for joining me today. Could you share with us a little bit why you started writing and how do you know what to write about? Thanks to for the great question. I would say start with something you are passionate about. I am passionate about Python visualization, that's why I wrote a bunch of articles on Python Viz. Or start with something you are interested in learning. For example, I was interested in learning various variance reduction methods in online experiments. I did some research and summarized those methods in a blog post. Also, if you can't find a good video or tutorial on a certain topic, it's a great opportunity to write about it. For example, I couldn't find a good tutorial on multi-class logistic regression. That's why I decided to write an article about it, and I even made a video. I used simple graphics to illustrate exactly how it works and how to implement it from scratch. And people find it very helpful and simple to understand. That's amazing. I can relate to a lot of that. So which platforms do you often write on and what do you think is the best place for someone who are just starting out? That is a very good question. I have experience with three platforms, GitHub Pages, Medium, and Anaconda Nucleus. I used to do GitHub Pages. I used Jupyter Book to set up my GitHub Pages. If you like to write your content in Jupyter Notebooks directly and to show your code and output on a web page, Jupyter Book is a great choice. However, I don't use GitHub Pages anymore because I realized my writing flow works the best if I just write on a blank Google Doc page instead of writing in a Markdown file or a Jupyter Notebook. Also, I would like to see the stats of my articles. I know people have set up Google Analytics for their own blog posts. I didn't really look into it, but I encourage you to give it a try if you have your own website or if you use GitHub pages. The second platform I use and I'm still using is Medium. I like many of the functionalities of Medium. It's very easy to write on Medium, easy to add GitHub gist if you like to show code, and it shows stats for each of my blog posts and many more. I think Medium is a good place to get started. The third platform I write on is Anaconda Nucleus. Anaconda Nucleus is a community education and engagement platform for data scientists and data practitioners. Anaconda Nucleus is welcoming community contributors. If you'd like to publish on Anaconda Nucleus, I'll link the information in the description below. Thanks, Sophia. I think it's really interesting that you've tried all these different platforms. To add to your point, I think it's also a very good option to have your own data science blog and then import your articles into Medium. That's what I usually do. And I think it's a very great option because you have the best of both worlds. You have your own articles living on your own website and you also have some exposure to a larger audience on Medium so that more people can get to read about your articles and you will potentially get more views. I'm also curious, what's your process for writing? Say from having an idea to publishing. How do you go about researching a topic and how much time do you typically spend on an article? Great question. I have a long list of article ideas that I would like to research and write about, including a wide range of data science related topics like visualization, modeling, A-B testing, Python tools, and data science practices. I think getting ideas 
is easy. Most of my ideas actually come from my day-to-day -day data science work. I also get ideas from attending data science related talks and conferences. Sometimes I would go through this long list of ideas and see which topic I feel inspired to write about. For topics I'm familiar with, it's pretty easy to get started and just to write. For topics I'm less familiar with, I would need to do more research, read more papers and documentations, and watch videos on this topic. And sometimes it's very hard to know what we don't know. That's why I also ask for advice from my data scientist friends, and then they would recommend learning resources for me. The time I spend on writing varies article by article. It may range from a few hours to a few weeks, depending on how familiar I am with the topic and how much research and reading are needed. One of the biggest challenges I found though is to get views on your articles. I saw a lot of articles, like really good quality articles on Medium, just don't get any views. Could you share with us what you do to get more views after publishing an article? Yeah, that's an important question many people are probably curious about. I think for me, um, there are three ways to get more views. The first is to find your audience and publish wherever your audiences are. I know my audience are data scientists or aspiring data scientists. That's why when I write on Medium, I usually publish on Towards Data Science. With more than 600,000 views, it is probably the most popular data science publisher on Medium. And that's also why I publish on Anaconda Nucleus. Anaconda Nucleus has millions and millions of users, and I know the Anaconda user community is my target audience. The second way to get more views is search engine optimization. I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but many of my blog posts rank at the top of Google searches. For example, if you search interactive dashboard in Python, my blog post shows up on top. If you search big data visualization Python, my blog post shows on top as well. Having those top ranked articles on Google really helps drive traffic to my blog posts. I actually don't know much about how SEO works, but I think the title and the first paragraph matter a lot. Finally, it's the content or maybe it's the most important thing. That's really amazing tips. I wrote a blog post a few months ago called Don't Make Data Scientists Do Scrum, where I shared my experience and thoughts about Scrum in this article. This blog post went viral unexpectedly. I think maybe it's because it's a controversial topic. People have strong opinions about process at work since each person is either having the process forced on them or it's the person forcing the process on others. Many people shared this article on social media, and there are many, many comments. I read through all the comments. There are a lot of lovers and also a lot of haters. Frankly, this experience is very overwhelming. I feel attacked by some of the comments. Wow, it's a very tough experience. Thanks for mentioning this. I guess this is what everyone has to go through if their contents ever get popular. For new writers, success indeed also comes with a lot of surprise, and I think that's really good to know. Big thanks to Sophia for sharing all these tips about their science writing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sophia also has a YouTube channel where she makes videos about data visualization and other data science topics. Please be sure to check it out and also of course check out her Medium blog for many high quality and interesting blog posts about data science and also data science careers. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions or thoughts about becoming a data science writer. Thank you for watching. Bye bye!